Hey, Shalom, Shalom. Hope you all having a blessed day through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Yahshai, Baal Hashem Rakakodash. Right. Also, I just want to give all praises, glory, and honor due unto Yahweh Hashem Yahshai. Is the name of the Father of the Son. Yahweh is, is the name of the Father. He is to be. Yahweh Shai is the name of the Son. He is the Savior. He is the Deliverer. Also, um, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone and the different and the other camp leaders abroad. May Yahweh Bashem Yahshai continue to bless you um, with more knowledge, wisdom, understanding, and truth. Especially with the certain pressures that you are facing now in these times, may Yahweh Bashem Yahshai ease that pressure by giving you the strength to move on in this truth, right? Also, Kwam Yasha'ala, Baba Ball, and Shalom to the Hopeful Elect. I'd just like to share this with you today. Um, and this is some of the vile things that um, these police officers do uh, behind the scenes. And, you know, they do it for uh, laughs and giggles. You know, there's a lot of twisted, sick stuff they do, man. I mean, really, it's just a hazing ritual they do. But um, a lot of sodomy goes on goes on in the police force. I mean, these, these academies, these, these departments... You got a lot of sick individuals in there. And a lot of you are Edomites, man. Um, and the scriptures talk about you Edomites in Job 30, which I'm going to get, about how you're violent in the earth, man. And these are the same people, the Edomites, Edomite cops. And you got Jake cops that are involved in there too, that are involved in this lewd behavior, man. These are the same people that rule over you, these Edomites. And they cruise in your neighborhood. You know, they put on that uniform. And, and, you know, a lot of people, they look at the badge, they look at the uniform, and they look up to it. You know, they look up, they look at that slogan, and the slogan of uh, to protect and serve, and people really believe in that. But now it's coming out that these cops are degenerates, man, these centurions. The majority of them are. Uh, the average, the, you know, the average Babylonian centurion, they're, they're messed up, man. They're all sick. And it's showing because a lot of them have high cases of PTSD. You know, they're all messed up in the head because they see a lot of messed up stuff. And, and plus, they have to pay for the things that they do. Right? There's a lot of corruption in the police force, man. These different police forces around Babylon are great. Um, so, it says cops get $2.5 million after fellow cops beat them with dildos on video, sodomize them with flashlights. And the scriptures go against um, sodomy. And these are, these people are enforcers of the law. They uphold the law in the society. So what the hell are they doing committing sodomy, man? Now, sodomy is just, it, it, it just doesn't involve anal sex. So, there's different types of sodomy. You have you have oral sex, too. That's considered sodomy. Right? But in this society, um, sodomy is really just affiliated with um, anal penetration. Right? Now, you're not supposed to be doing that in the scriptures. You know, the title alone should should spark some red flags. You should already be thinking of some scriptures. I got one on deck. It's uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, Leviticus 18 and 22. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind is an abomination. Right? And uh, yeah, that, that you know, it, it, ly lying lying down with, with mankind, it, it just doesn't mean, you know, you're in the bed sheets. It could you it could mean that you just do anything that's that's uh, disgusting or lewd or any homosexual act, you know, like putting a dildo up a man's ass. You're not supposed to do that. Putting or or even putting a a, a dildo or or any foreign object up a man's ass or even a woman's ass. That's all. That's all different forms of sodomy. That's wickedness. You're not supposed to do that, right? But these enforcers of the law, they're doing that. So it just shows you we live in a very wicked society and it's 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 blatantly clear that they don't uphold the laws of the scriptures. They don't uplift that. They make up their own rules. Because to them, this is funny. Look at the smile that he has on his face. Right? This is all a hazing ritual. And we know that um, the police, they're low-level masons, really just a fraternity. And um, within these different fraternities, especially the Masons, they go through a, especially new members, they go through something called a hazing, right, an initiation. Now, let me read on. It says here, Mountainside, New Jersey, 
A lawsuit filed by six police officers from Mountainside Police Department revealed a culture of corruption. Yeah, corruption. Because that's what the, the, the police are about. Corruption, man. Sadistic corruption. And that's why they call them pigs, man. Because what do pigs do? Pigs roll around in their own filth and dirt. They eat their own shit and they enjoy it. So that's why it says a culture of corruption. Because that's the norm. That's a norm in that police department. To be filthy. And corrupt do, to do things that are wrong and sadistic hazing within the department according to the lawsuit supervisors took part in degrading pranks on other officers which included smacking officers with a giant blue dildo that they named Big Blue as well as defecating in the shoes of officers and in some cases sodomizing them with flashlights now because police departments fail to hold themselves accountable as they always do right when the heat when shit hits the fan, when the heat, when the, when the spotlight is put on them, now they fold up and say that they didn't do anything. That's these cops. And that's why you're, you're seeing a lot of these protests, man. Whether they're, they're, whether they're, they're um, sponsored by um, the Illuminati, which, which are these banking families, you know, George Soros, who owns and, and sponsors um, or finances um, Black Lives Matter. He pretty much owns that. Even though they're, they're all set up, there is still footage and evidence out there that show how these cops are, are, are evil, man. And they don't hold themselves accountable to the wicked acts that they do. <laughs> right? Well, you know, they shoot people. They shoot unarmed citizens. They, they shoot mothers. They, they, they bully little children. They sell drugs. Right? They come in your neighborhood. They sell drugs, especially in the ghetto. All right? Walking around your complex in a in a blue in a in a blue uniform, looking hard at you, ready to beat you up and frisk you and pat your balls down, man. So people are waking up to the fact that these cops, man, they're corrupt and they're wicked as hell. And that's because everybody has a smartphone. Everybody can record what anybody can record any anybody at any given moment and, and upload it instantaneously on the internet. And, and that's why. That's why all this heat is, is falling upon these police officers. Now, you notice how they're making like a joke out of this, man. It, it's like, woe unto them that call evil good. Matter of fact, I'm going to get that. Because um, their, they, their, 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 their wickedness is, is really, their form of wickedness, they're turning it into humor. It's not supposed to be funny. This is all against the law. This is a serious thing they did. A serious offense. Uh, let's see, uh, Isaiah chapter 5 verse 20, Woe unto them that call evil good, and good evil, that put darkness for light, and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet, and sweet for bitter. And this is a hazing. This is what you call a hazing, and this is this this is an evil thing that they call good. Right? And this is a dark thing that they put for light. You know, you're gonna, you're gonna make sergeant next year if you just uh, put a dildo in your mouth, or you... You, you put a foreign object up your ass. Let me just do this to you, then uh, you'll be your career will be set. You know, and that's that's what uh, that basically that's what this uh, world is about. You know, it's funny how people would rather humiliate themselves to get ahead in the society for wickedness, but people won't humiliate themselves for righteousness' sake. The scriptures talk about before honor cometh humility. Yeah, you're going to get humility uh, on whatever path you take, whether you take the right hand, whether you take the left hand. But there, there's a righteous way in pursuing humility, man. You know, you, you shouldn't be humiliated in a wicked way. Right? Being sodomized. Anyway, our, our people, they don't get it, man. Anyway, I'm rambling on. Um, actually, let me just get that scripture. Um, see if I can find it here. Uh, Proverbs chapter 18, verse 12, Before destruction, the heart of man is haughty, and before honor is humility. That's right. So before you get honored, you have to be humiliated. And it goes both ways. Right? This was a form of them being humiliated to get honored into that fraternity. But then it turned into a lawsuit. People were complaining because I guess they took it too far. Somebody squealed. Right, and now, and that applies. That applies on the right hand side. You see, in this in this uh, faith of ours, 
you have to be humiliated. You're going to be uh, rejected by men for serving Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. People are not going to like you for the things that you say, for the things that you uphold, for your beliefs. People are not going to like you, I'm telling you. And then your daily walk, people are just not going to like you, man. And it's because you're wearing the armor of righteousness. People are just not going to like you. And it's not that they have it out for you. It's just when you meet them, it's just a spirit. There's a spirit that's clashing between you and that person, man. Because they're in this world and you're not in the world. So you're going you're gonna to always have that constant tension. You're going to have to take the low road. Even though you're right, you're going to have to take the low road. Most times. Right? And you saw Yahweh he went through all of that. So let me move on. It says, uh, Officers Jeffrey Stinner, Christopher Feiner, Richard Latargia, Thomas Norton, and James Urban, Administrative Assistant Amy Culinary, previously a dispatcher, said in the lawsuit they were subjected to hostile work environment and retaliation, according to NJ.com. The settlement states that Mountainside denies all wrongdoing, as of course, and that both sides agreed to it for the purpose of avoiding the burden of expense of litigation. The claims of these officers are supported by video evidence which shows Sergeant Andrew Hubbard and Lieutenant Thomas Murphy smacking an officer in the face with a dildo, and then Borough Police Chief Allen Atancio did nothing to intervene. Murphy can be seen laughing and taking out his cell phone to record the encounter. In another video, Murphy was dressed up like Santa Claus for a holiday party and handed out dildos to officers as gifts. Now, you must be traumatized for that, man, to see that stuff. Yeah, be traumatized, man. That's a hostile, that is a hostile work environment. That's nasty. Hubbard was named multiple times in the lawsuit and was accused of defecating in another officer's boots and placing his testicles on other on other officers' food on multiple occasions. Wow. Hubbard reportedly called the act of defiling his subordinates' food, braining, and he would usually take a photo of his genitals on the food and show the photo to the victim after they had eaten their lunch. Hubbard would even walk around the bathroom naked, taunting officers while swinging a dildo and throwing feces around. Wow, right? And this is uh, this is somebody that's in charge, man. Right? This is not a low-level officer. This is a high-level officer, okay, who had a position. Now, the scriptures talk about that. Your elites act just this way, right? I have a precept. People who run this society, they, they're just like these police officers, and even worse, right? Um, it says, Ecclesiasticus chapter 10, verse 1, a wise judge will instruct his people, and the government of a prudent man is well-ordered. In this society, it's not well-ordered. And um, the people who run this society, they're not prudent men. They, you know why? Because they don't uphold the scriptures. Actually, the, the scriptures go against them for holding the scriptures. That's how wicked they are. And I'll prove that. Let me, uh, let me get uh, Psalms 50. Fifty and sixteen. It says, "But unto the wicked, the Most High says, What hast thou to do to declare my statutes, or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth?" So they're so wicked and defiled that they shouldn't even, they shouldn't even uh, take the Lord's covenant, law, statutes, and commandments, and 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 put it in their mouth, you know, or state it, or actually enforce the law of it. You shouldn't, seeing thou hatest instruction and castest my words behind thee, when thou sawest a thief. And thou contendest with him and hast been a partaker with adulterers. Right. And that's what they're all about, man. All of these things that are going to be listed on down. Everything that goes against the instructions of the Lord, the law, statutes, and commandment, the covenant. You know, so they have no business enforcing the law to begin with. And they're so wicked to the point that they can't enforce the law. They're not set up. They're not the right people. They're not of the right stock and caliber to do that. Right, so a wise judge will instruct his people, and the government of a prudent man is well ordered. Babylon the Great is full of confusion. It is not a well ordered place. This is the place where you can be, wherever you be, whatever you want to be. And to some people, they'll call that a utopia, but really, that's a dis 
this utopian society, man. Okay, that's a disutopian society. It's, it's, it's dysfunctional. It's corrupt. But a lot of people will call this a utopia. It's not. Doing whatever you want, that's not order. And and by the way, um, equality doesn't equate to justice. That's not That's not order. That's disorder. Okay, so that within itself is off. And that and th this is the place that we live in. They they uphold those things. Okay? Verse 2, as the judge of the people is himself, so are his officers. So the reason why you see these officers acting this way is because the people who run the society, the elites, the elite banking families, starting with the Rothschilds, they act like that. You know, they do demonic rituals, they haze each other, play with dildos, they put objects up their rectums, right? They do wicked things to their wives probably, most likely, which I'm going to get into because the scriptures talk about how the nations defile the land through their, through their wickedness and how we're not supposed to go down that path. So they do all these things, man. So I'm not surprised when I see these cops act this way. You see how he has a, a sadistic smile on his face? He's happy doing these things. You know, don't be surprised, man. These are your cops that protect and serve. They hold a position in your society. You know, they probably coach kids on the weekend. You know how these cops, um, they get into extracurricular activities and helping out kids in the community. You know, don't be surprised, man. That cop that may come to your little kid's practice, he's a sodomite, man. All right? So, uh, <clears throat> now uh, let's, let's continue on here. Uh, in one incident, Hubbard reportedly, actually, did I finish the scripture? Actually, I didn't really finish the scripture. Let me just uh, finish this off here. Verse 2, As the judge of the people is himself, so are his officers, and what manner of man the ruler of the city is. Such are all they that dwell therein. And, you know, it, it's not just the judge and the officers. It's the, it's the people. The whole city is corrupt. Uh, that's why, uh, what, did, what, did, uh, what did Lot ask? He's like, isn't there anybody that's... Well, oh, what did Abraham ask about Sodom and Gomorrah? He's like, isn't there anybody righteous... In, uh, in Sodom and Gomorrah, if you're going to destroy that, can't you just check if there was anybody righteous? And the only the only people that were righteous, the person that was righteous was Lot and his family. And, and not even all his family, his wife. <laughs> his wife wasn't even right. Because she looked back and then she got turned into a pillar of salt because she wanted to go back into Sodom and Gomorrah. Because <laughs> she was going to lose all her goodies. right, All her wealth. But that just goes to show you, man. There's not a lot of righteous people living in this place. And by the way, we represent Lot too. Okay, we represent Lot. The righteous the righteous guy living in a wicked land. Just trying to get by. Trying to get by. And uh, when you read that story, or when you read that account in the scriptures, that that is stressful to live in Babylon, man. It's stressful to live in, in Sodom and Gomorrah because you know you you're you're gonna be you're gonna be put in situations where you're going to have to sometimes compromise for these people's wickedness. You know, you can't just outright go out and curse them out for, for doing wicked things. You might just have to take the low road and maneuver your way out of things, man. And uh, that's what Lot had to do when he was with the angel. When when a, a gang of, of gay bandits showed up at his door wanting to uh, rape the angel, defile and, and rape the and the angel man and, and pop it <laughs> you know he he had to go through those things he had to witness that and that that's what we witness over here in this land man just like what I'm what I'm reading to you now we have to witness this we can't do anything about this man this is some sick shit right walk around naked throwing feces around running around putting genitals on people's food smacking people with dildos which you're not supposed to be touching a dildo. A dildo is, is a mold of another man's rod. Homosexuality, man. It's off. You women shouldn't even be doing that in the bedroom either, man. That's, that's messed up shit. Uh, you know? Anyway, uh, that's a different topic. But um, just thought I'd bring that out. Okay? So uh, let's, let's go back. It says, in one incident, Hubbard reportedly chased the local fire chief around police headquarters with the, with Big Blue. Ironically, Hubbard was in charge of the department's internal affairs investigation unit. So this guy had a high position. He was in charge of a department. He oversaw 
the Department of Internal Affairs investigation, which which goes into uh, investing the the behaviors of of uh, other police officers. You know, so he's he's in charge of 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 investigating other officers if if they if they get out of line. But yet this guy he's out of line. The guy who runs the, the department is out of line. That's messed up. Which is tasked with policing the behavior of the officers and punishing them when they get out of line. Hubbard's action shows just how much of a farce the Eternal Affairs unit it unit was. Yeah, it is a farce because it's a joke. It's a mockery. You know, you dishonor the badge, so to speak. You dishonor the badge. I'm going to use that term like uh, what Denzel used in uh, the, the Equalizer. <laughs> you dishonor the badge, Joe. You dishonor the badge. All right. Anyway. Says the Internal Affairs Unit was, and it is likely that this is not unique to the Mountainside Police Department. Wow, so it's, it's an ongoing thing that always happens. While sitting on the toilet, Hubbard, while sitting on the toilet, would fling excrement soiled toilet paper, plaintiff Christopher Finer states in the lawsuit. And this shows that this guy's an Edomite, man. This is Job 30. This is Job 30. Right, so Job chapter 30, verse 1, But now they that are younger than I have mean derision, whose fathers I would have disdained to set with the dogs of my flock. Yeah, and they're into bestiality too. All right, these white women too. Man, you got to be careful with a white woman with a dog, man. You know, if she's all alone, she's single, and she has a dog, you know what she's doing with that dog, man. She's she's probably popping that dog. Never date a white woman with who loves dogs, man. Just, I'm just getting I'm just putting that out there okay be careful okay uh, it says uh, and and that goes for the Edomite man too they're into that stuff um, verse 2 yea were too might the strength of their hands profit me in whom old age was perished for want and famine they were solitary fleeing into the wilderness in former time desolate and waste wasted away is he I Shashua. And, and that's going to be his habitat. That's his name. So that's going to be his habitat. All right. And um, yeah, that, that's why you can watch movies like Quest for Fire. And it's in their history. They, they talk about how they were cavemen, their ancestors. They were cavemen. So you have the term Caucasian. Okay. It's verse 4. Who cut up mallows by the bushes and juniper roots for their meat. You know, their vegan diet. And you have certain liquors that are made out of juniper roots, like uh, gin, London dry gin, Tanqueri gin. That's all made out of juniper roots. You know, this is a, these are actually good things to eat, right? Certain herbs, they're good for you. To, they're good for you. And you know, these Edomites, they're about their health. A lot of them are into the, the, the veganism. They're into the herbs more more than you tribes, right? Verse five. They were driven forth from among men. They cried after them as after a thief to dwell in the cliffs of the valleys in the caves of the earth and in the rocks yeah Petra Mount Seir that's where they live the caves Caucasus Mountains man and they were driven they were driven there man by our ancestors too and they were, they were hated by our ancestors alright we didn't like you Edomites and we don't like you today the ones that are in their right mind we don't like you and we're gonna do this again we're gonna drive you out put you into captivity and put you in a low state and you're and, and you're no longer going to be in this state you're no longer going to be an enforcer of the law that's not your place it's not your place that's our place because we were given the law statutes and commandments and look what you're doing with it man now i'm getting mad look what you're doing with it and you should get angry if you're in Israel when you look at things like this you should get angry right Verse 7, among the bushes they braid, under the nettles they were gathered together. They were, yeah, they didn't even have a language. They braid, they braid like animals, like horses. Brr. That's how they speak. Brr. Grunting and burring and shit. Verse 8, they were children of fools. Yea, children of base men. Yeah, flinging feces, running around naked in bathrooms, enticing people. For what? That's foolish, man. That's disgusting, man. They were viler than the earth. Yep, viler than the earth. And that's another reason why you don't have melanin, man. Because you're vile. The earth hates you. 
That's just one aspect of how you act. And, and yes, you do everything contrary to the scriptures as well. That's why you're vile. Because these laws that we are given, they go, they're in tune with the earth. See, these laws, they, they, they show you how to treat the earth. They teach you about personal conduct. Right, which I read in, in uh, Leviticus 18. This all goes into personal conduct, man, and how you condone yourself. How you, how you treat another human being, man. Whether it be through sex, whether it be through, um, um, you know, ethics, moral rights, this is personal conduct, man. You Edomites, you don't, you don't, you don't condone, you don't con condone yourself or conduct yourself in the right way. You do everything contrary to what, what, what to what's being read here. All right, so. Yeah, so it says here, Hubbard also worked with children as an officer for the school district and coached children's sports team. Yeah, so he was around kids. This guy was around kids. This nasty guy is around your children, man. And a lot of them are like that. You see a lot of cops that are involved with the community, man. You should always, you should always watch a cop around your kids, man. Don't trust these cops. These cops are into some nasty shit. I'm not going to say all of them are. Some of them are good people. And some of them are going to be a part of the elect. Right? Some of them are. Now, let me get uh, uh, Leviticus chapter. Yeah, I'm going to start at 20 verse. Yeah, I'm going to start at verse 15. And if a man lie with a beast, he shall surely be put to death. And he shall slay the beast. Oh, hold on. There was something else I, read, I wanted to read here. Yeah. Verse 13, if a man also lie with mankind as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. So they should be put to death. These guys should be put to death. Should be killed. Shouldn't be a settlement. They shouldn't have went on a sick leave. No, um, um, early, early leave. Leave without, leave with pay and then get retired get, and then be put on retirement. I believe that's what this guy went on. Um, yeah, it says it right here. I knew I read it. It says according to NJ.com, the chief was placed on was uh, placed on paid administrative leave one week after the lawsuit was filed. By July, he and Hubbard had filed for retirement, so they get a slap on the wrist. They weren't put to death; they were let go, which they should have been put to death, according to the scriptures. Um, now let me go down and read here. Yeah, so this is this is the point. It says, uh, verse twenty-two: Ye shall therefore keep all my statutes, and all my judgments, and do them, that the land whither I bring you to dwell there and spew you not out. So, if you want to keep your land, you want to keep your home. You want to keep. Uh, your nation, you want to keep your your ancient landmarks. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta follow the law, statutes, and commandments. Like I said earlier, these laws they're in tune with the land, and a lot of our people they don't know that. And this is why America is in such a messed up state. Well, the whole world, to be exact, is in such a, a messed up state. That's why all these uh, these uh, natural disasters, these these weird weird events. Like these earthquakes, this is the reason why it's happening. Is because they're not following the, they're not practicing the law on, on the land. They're doing wickedness. So the, so so by default, this earth is going to spit you out. This is just a reaction of how the earth is is, is reacting to you, man. All right. So these laws, they're in tune with the earth, and it just shows this earth that we live on. It's very spiritual. Right, so I'll read that one more time. It says, "Ye shall keep all my statutes and all my judgments, and do them, that the land whither I bring you to dwell, therein spew you not, spew you not out." Right, and that's why America is, is circling down the drain because they don't they don't follow the law, statutes, and commandments, and that's why the world is so messed up. The weather is out of whack. The food is is degraded. Right, everything's out of order. And it's be, that's, a, that's a result of the, the land spewing you out because you're not following the laws. 
Verse 23, And ye shall not walk in the manners of the nation, which I cast out before you. Yeah, because how did we get... Um, how do we get um, our, our, how do we get the nation how do we get the land of Israel Canaan right how do we get it we got it by taking out the, the original inhabitants of that land the can those Canaanites took them out right we got our, our homeland so we're, we're not supposed to um, walk in, in in their ways and that's what a majority of our people are doing now when they come to America when they live here they go into the ways of Cain, the ways of Esau. Do as thou art will, which is not walking in the law, statutes, and commandments. Right? So it says, Which I cast out before you, for they committed all these things, and I they and I therefore abhorred them. So the Lord, He He really He's really not with America and what they uh, uphold. This election, uh, uh, pride, gay pride gay marriage feminism the Lord ain't with this because that's not in the scriptures that's not lawful in the sight of the Lord so the Lord he abhors them he, he abstains from them and ultimately he's going to destroy them and that's why he's telling you not to walk in their ways and I just want to make a point here it may seem like I'm going off topic but I notice something with Jake and um, you know Jake Jake will so called do all the right things in this society he'll go to school he'll get tutors he'll play on sports teams he'll get a scholarship he'll do all the so-called right things but then he'll never get to the top and, and that goes for all you Israelites even even those of you that made it and who have done great things it's to the point where you have done so many great things so-called you know great things for this devil in his society but you don't get the credit for it that even that even this even applies to you Right, you do all these things, all these great things, but you'll you'll never get to the top. And sometimes our people, majority of the time, they get they get discouraged by that. But you know what you need to do? You need to you need to get up, go look in the mirror, and take a close look at yourself, man. And you're gonna realize, you no, know, and what you have to consider and realize is that you're you're not another nation, man. You're not you're not the heathen, and you're definitely not an Edomite. You're not a white person. You gotta you gotta. You gotta get up and say, "Hey, look, look, nigga, look at yourself in the mirror. Look, nigga, I'm not an Edomite, and things aren't things are not gonna go go plan on how you think it's gonna go plan, man. Just because you're you're following in the ways that they're doing, because really how you're acting, you're acting like a white guy, man. You're you're acting like a heathen nation or a man from a heathen nation. You're you're and you're not white, okay? You're doing the things that white that white people do." To get successful you're following that same blueprint that they follow and that blueprint was made for them it wasn't made for you okay and once you come to that realization you'll be stepping into the realm of being a majority not a minority if you keep thinking the way that you're thinking now you know which is getting down on yourself following the ways of Esau you will always stay in that category of being a minority and I don't care how successful you are that's how you're gonna always be Okay, the way you become a majority is by following these scriptures, man, and, 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 and realizing who you are and who your power is, right? And I'm reading it, man. These, these laws, these statutes and commands, these laws, statutes, and commands, th this will turn you into the majority. And um, that's another thing with Jake. You know, when they're in that state of being a minority, they're always concerned about what Esau or the other nations are saying about them. It's never the other way around. It never is. It never is. You know, these 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 heathen, these heathen nations, when they come into your space, they should be worried about what you think about them, not the other way around, man. Okay? And that's the mentality you need to keep. When you I don't care I don't care what job you have. Okay? Whether you have a menial job, you have to show these people that hey, I am an Israelite, you know, and I know my job. What could you tell me? That's the attitude you have You have to have with these heathens, man. You shouldn't play with these heathens, okay? I don't care what job you have, what job you have, whether you're in these scriptures, whether you're out in your daily life, you have to know what you're doing, man. You have to show it, all right? 
you have to have that mindset of a majority man. And a lot of our people, they don't have that. The only people that have that are the men of the Lord. Okay. So, um, you know, I hope, I hope that, um, hope that gave some exhortation, some encouragement to y'all for whoever's listening. But that's how you got to think. And, and these, these scriptures, they're teaching us that. The Lord is teaching us how to think that way. Now, it says, But I have said unto you, you shall inherit their land, and I will give it unto you to possess it, a land that floweth with milk and honey. I am Yahweh, your power, which have separated you from other people. So you're not like the other people. And if you follow the law, statutes, and commandments, you're going to get the kingdom, a land that floweth with milk and honey. And we've experienced it, you know, a, a for, for a time with, with King Solomon. You've experienced it, but we're going to experience it even greater with uh, Yahweh Shai, man, when he comes back and he delivers us. So, uh, you know, I hope this was edifying unto you all. Until next time, just want to give all praises, glory, and honor to unto Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakodash, double honesty, apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Um, and with that, Shalom. Shalom to the hopeful.